Welcome back to The Breakfast. Now, our very first, you know, conversation this morning, we're going to be talking about paternity fraud. Uh, this is coming up uh, mostly because of a big story that broke over the weekend or sometime last week about the death of a guy called Tunde Thomas. Uh, the story, of course, now, then went into discussing reasons why he may have had um, a heart failure, um, the discussions about a bank MD that allegedly is a father to his two kids. It's a long, very sad story the way it was told and it, it creates a long conversation about paternity fraud in Nigeria. There are rumors that Nigeria seems to have the second highest rate of paternity fraud in the world, the only second to Jamaica. Uh, that hasn't been confirmed yet but of course uh, we'll be talking about that this morning and um, the um, release by the bank, the FCMB, that of course has decided to investigate their MD and, uh, you know, would be looking into whether he broke any of the rules or the code of ethics, you know, for the bank. Uh, that uh, statement was put out um, a couple of hours ago, sometime yesterday. We've invited this morning to share thoughts on this uh, story, Abisola Richard. She is a child book author. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for the um, opportunity. All right. Um, I would say um, the situation is rather unsettling, and yeah, well, we'll, we we'll get into it. We'll, we'll get into it in a in a in a second. We also have with us this morning uh, once again Libra Soshoma, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for stepping in. All right. Um, I'm going to start with um, Bisola Richard. I, I want to get your quick thoughts. You know on. Um, this whole situation, you know, we've already spoken this morning and said that there's, there's very likely a lot that we do not know about what is going on. You know, we've only heard from one side. We need, still, of course, would love to hear from the, the, from the wife and, um, of course, from the MD himself. But let's get your thoughts quickly on, you know, the whole situation. Um, I'm not trying to act as a... Um a spokesperson for each parties. All I'm focused upon is the fact that, you know, we have um, children involved and we can only um, hope that it turns out well in terms of the impact on the children. Um, one must say that um, Many times as adults, as we make decisions, we tend not to understand the long-term effects. And I would say that um, I can only hope that in the midst of all that's going on, you know, the children are thought about and the long-term effects on the children are considered. All right, because, um, you know, when, as it's said, when um, elephants um, have challenges or as they battle, the grass suffers. So, yeah. Yes, we, we of course, we... Uh, feel the same way absolutely about the kids and we hope that you know they are completely shielded from all the mess that this brings. Um, Libra Sashoma, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to you now. Um, you're a lawyer. Uh, you of course would understand what the code of ethics for the bank would be. Uh, some people have argued that well as long as it was consensual then you know there's absolutely no issues here. Uh, so so let's, let's also hear from you. Uh, I want to assume because uh, for me I wouldn't want to as a lawyer, uh, it's, I will find it very difficult, um, you know, passing um, judgment or comment on the basis of one-sided story. I've always told my friends that uh, this story is too one-sided for me to make comments on because there are so many loopholes in the stories. Uh, first and foremost, um, I have not. It's the fact that somebody said it does not also authenticate yes. the fact that the story is true. You know, and that's why the bank is even investigating. If the bank had come out now to say, yes, we have investigated and established this fact. We know that these things happen in organizations. But the fact that somebody, an unknown person, just came online and, you know, threw a story out there and all of us are showing the story. Um, the man is dead. The man in question. And the story came out in, upon the man's demise. And so the family also, to so little sniper that gathered, had said it didn't come from them. And then also, if you look at the politics of becoming a bank MD in Nigeria, you know, I also understand that such stories can emanate. If you have, if you're sitting in a position that somebody so much 
desire. Also, you know, such stories can come up depending on, um, you know, how desperate uh, the person desires that you sit. Yes. And then lastly, here, when we do these things, nobody's talking about the children involved here, whether true or not. Science has shown over time that you can do paternity tests without actually, you know, without the consent of the children or even the, the, the wife. And all of these, these are allegations. There have been no, no, not even emails to substantiate, not even SMS, not even WhatsApp messages to substantiate the fact that, you know, there, were, there was an allegation. Apart yes. from the fact that some people say, oh, these children looks like, <laughs> you know. So, so for me, I'm at a loss because the question I keep asking is, this man, this marriage lasted for like 12 years or so. And then all through this, okay, they said the, the, the lady relocated uh, when the first child was, was eight. All through these eight years, these guys were together. Even when the lady relocated, the guy, if you look at the obituary, signed by 47 friends. So of all of these friends, nobody knew, nobody told him. And then he didn't know. And then even when the wife allegedly told him that these children are not yours, he didn't raise alarm. His family didn't raise alarm. And he, 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 he moved on. You know, he went into another relationship, was on the verge of getting married. And then all of a sudden, he died. And then somebody came say, and said, he probably died as a result of. There is no autopsy to also establish the cause of death. These people that came up with this story, there's no autopsy report to say, oh, he died as a result. Mind you, also, they said he had stroke. Three years before now, he managed it. And, you know, so for me, I, I think somebody is just trying to keep us busy here. And, you know, when it comes to these issues of marriage, paternity, you know, we really don't care. Not minding that there are children whose life might be affected in the long run. We just all become very judgmental, very sentimental. Then this uh, issue of, oh, Nigeria is the second highest in terms of paternity fraud. It, 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 it comes up because here, really, we hardly do tests. And also, I tell people, it takes more than, you know, just biologically fathering a child to be a father. father. There are people who are adopting, you know, children. They didn't even know where, where they were born. And then they take care of them. And years later, these children grew up to look like them. You wow. know, so we should be very careful when we pass judgment. I won't sit down here and say, oh, the MD is guilty, the wife is guilty, oh, the man is guilty. When it's just a story. Yeah, well, we, of course, we look forward to what the, the yes, bank is. Yes, indeed. We don't have all the sides of the story, right? We don't, we've not really heard from the woman right now. We don't really know how that relationship began, how that relationship you know, continued over time. That is if there was so a the relationship at all. Yes, exactly. We don't have the facts of this case. But what we do know now is that over two or almost 2,000 people have signed a petition for the FCMB MD to resign. And you'd, <laughs> you would agree with me that in other parts of the world, because of the scandal, the man would have resigned on his own. But now yeah. they're asking for him to be sacked. But what, how do you think this might play out, seeing that he's a management staff? Yeah, that's, that you see... Uh, because of um, you can be browbeated into resigning, you know, with scandals like this. I'm not holding brief for him. What I'm saying is, we should also understand it from the point of view of the boardroom politics in FCMB. You know, so you should understand it from that boardroom politics because the direction it's not about nobody's talking about the children, nobody cares about the man's family, the, the reputation. Of, on the disease, nobody's concerned about the woman, even without hearing a side of the story, we have all condemned her. The fixation is on FCMB. Oh, the MD must step down. The MD must, even Should when... I think, I think everyone has been, what? everyone has also mentioned, you know, the, 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 the factors that bring in the, the it, wife here and said, even, you know, a lot about, even, um, about it, women it, being unfaithful. That, that has also been a major part of the Exactly, and so nobody's talking about men being unfaithful. Everybody here oh, wow. is about women, women, women. And so when it concerns women, it's always very quick. Oh, you look, this woman is this, this woman is that. The man should immediately step down. Even when FCMB had said, we're going to investigate. Since when has it become the job of the CBN? 
to investigate matrimony <laughs> and domestic issues. All right, hold on. Let's let's go back to um, Abisola. Um, I'm sure, of course, you've been uh, following. Um, I, I want you know you, you know you to quickly share with us you know what you know the the kids really might be dealing with at a time like this, and what level of investigation would you expect to you know happen um, after all these uh, details have been revealed. Um. Right now, I can imagine because um, from what I can see, like I said, I I really am not going into the details of you know the the reality of things. But the truth of the matter is, the social media has you know taken up the position, and they haven't considered the children, like I already mentioned. And like we all know that social media does not forget. And like we all know that our children, the children of, of, of our age are very exposed, you know. However, you know, we, 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 um, one can't, con one can't um, place a limit on how children should be exposed to social media because it also has its benefits. But right now it's, you know, these children who perhaps um, I'm not certain of their age, but from what I could see is they, are, they fall within the pre-teenage age gap. And I can imagine that they might, even if, you know, they are being protected as best as all the people, all the elders and people in authority around them can, they probably might be catching snippets of, you know, what's going on. And a lot of emotional turmoil will be going in, you know, going through their hearts and minds, they would have a lot of questions. You know, they would... Um, and sometimes because they don't have a, a way to release it, it will come out in, you know, in in outbursts. It will come out in, you know, in, of course, sometimes tears. It will come out in a lot of questions and a lot of voices going, you know, through their minds right now. And... The truth of the matter is, like I said earlier, it would be great if someone takes a moment in this time to actually have a conversation and let them air their views, ask them questions, and allow them to ask questions. What, what, um, what, at, a, at a time like this, what would you um, want from, uh, from the bank itself? You know, you, you, there, there should be some way to prove that any of this is true or false. Uh, do you expect that there should be further investigations? Uh, well, maybe? I, 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 the, the, I assume from the comments we already are getting that the bank is doing what the bank can do. And so the only thing we can um, ask is that, you know, it's sped up. The only thing that we can ask is that... Um, Whatever is done is done thoroughly and without any form of bias and with all objectivity. And that's the only thing I can say. But with regards to the children, I guess it's the custodians and those who, are, who have the, the, the duty of care, who have the direct duty of care that would need to do all that they need to do. Because beyond the scandal, beyond all the stories we're hearing on the social media, these children have their lives ahead of them. And we need to help to manage them continually and with the long-term effects in mind. And remembering that the, 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 those on the social media who are making a lot of comments don't even know these children and may not really care or may not even remember at this point that there are children involved and their emotional well-being is very important. Mm. All right. Because... These are our future at the end of the day. Indeed, Abisa Richard. Uh, turning back now, back to Liberos uh, Oshama, is there a legal it's solution to this? Very easy. Very easy. That's why I, people always insist that every dead person, every diseased person, there must be an autopsy report. Autopsy reports. That would establish... It's, it's like... And the reason for this is... Like a medical doctor once told me, it's like the dead advising the living. So once you know this is a cause of death, this can kill. And then you now know how to manage people that have similar amen. And then also, like I said, 
paternity test, you don't need the consent of the woman. You, all you need, even to saliva, your, the hair strands and all of those things, you can go conduct a paternity test. If you are not sure of, you know. And then, lastly, on the issue of investigating the outcome by the bank, we're all, first, first, first and foremost, before then, we should be very, we should not be quick to be judgmental, knowing fully well that there are different sides yeah. to every story. There are actually three sides, your side, my side, and the truth. And the truth is always constant. And so, in investigating, the bank should ensure that there is no stone left unturned. And lastly, legally speaking, I can tell you that if the family also, if they have relationship, if there's any doubt at all created in the mind, the family also can somehow conduct a paternity test on these children if they have a relationship with the woman or if there's any of them that is close to these children, you know, to determine all of these and set the record straight. Because we've seen, I've handled a matter personally, a divorce matter, where because of anger, because of frustration and because of the, the, to, the, the, the um, torture that the woman went through in the hands of the husband, he said, look, you are not the father of my children. And at the end of the day, when tests were conducted, it revealed that the, father, the man was actually the father, father of those children. The woman said, I needed, because you have be accusing me of infidelity, so I needed to, at least once and for all, let you go through the pain that I went through. So we need, because science has moved beyond all of these things. And so we also need sometimes, the, I can tell you for free, that once the MD resigns now, this matter will die down. Knowing, understanding the politics that goes on in Nigerian banks, I can tell you, once the MD resigns, this matter will die down. You won't hear of it again. Let and then the bank will tell you, uh, well, we investigated that uh, the committee set up. We need to come up with a report. And then we move on to the next social media story. Yeah. But it, and of course, you know, the, and that's one thing that Abisola said. You know, a lot of people on social media are really just, you know, looking for what's the new exciting thing, you know, that they can it's, share it's, their exactly. thoughts with. You know, what's but you forget that today? someday these children, maybe now they'll be asking their mother, is this true? Is this not true? And all of that. And then someday they want to work in the same bank or they, you know, get to school and they have mates who show them something online and say, look at, look at that. You know the psychological trauma they would go through. Yes. But then lastly, lastly, um, for, for a, lot of, a lot of us are guilty of this. I tell people, marriage is not just all about sex and money. There's more to marriage than sex and money. And so we should also be concerned about the emotional well-being of our partner, male or female. And then, you know, you know, people say this. I'm not, you know, a lady working in an organization spends more, even a man, you spend more time in the office at her home. And so you relate more with your colleagues in the office. And so as a spouse, take time to communicate. You started by communicating. You must end with communication. So, but in the absence of communication, just like you say, when you don't talk to your kids, somebody will talk to them. In the absence of communication, be sure that somebody else is talking to your partner. All right. All right. So, um, just before we wrap up this conversation, I would like to quickly bring in again uh, uh, Abiola Richard. Um, you are a child uh, book author. You you basically uh, write. You basically write. You write for kids. And I, I understand that you know very well about these issues. And statistics here have shown that kids from broken homes are more likely to, you know, have an increased level of, you know, emotional problems, psychological problems, behavioral challenges. So when situations like this occur, as, as seen that they're unavoidable in society, how best do you think the parents should be able to handle this? to shield their children from this so that they're not, you know, they don't go through that emotional, uh, you know, turmoil, maybe as much. Mm. Yeah, um, thank you for the question. Um, so basically, um, we can, well, one can only desire that, you know, the, the, the statistics of 
broken homes would start to reduce as opposed to increase. And having said that, um, when we are faced with that situation and that circumstance in our lives, I would say that whatever the parents are doing, they should do bearing in mind the effects on the children. Like I'd mentioned earlier about the African adage about when the elephants fight, I'm just paraphrasing, the grass suffers. So we need to understand that beyond the pain, as um, was mentioned, beyond the pain, beyond um, perhaps the um, feeling of being hurt and wanting to pay back and, you know, let the person have a piece of their own cake. We need to understand that we should fight those battles, not disregarding that at the end of the day, it's only a matter of time, the children will grow. So conversations should take place. I, I know sometimes the two, you know, the spouses may not be able to sit together and have, you know, conversations, you know, with the children. Though, yes, there's a separation about to take place, already taking place. They might not be able to have those conversations together. But when they have conversations with the children, they should try and not um, be derogatory about the other person. It shouldn't be about, you know, trying to damage or cast aspersions or blame it should be, you know, trying to make the children understand that this is not about you. This has nothing to do with you. We can only hope that you, when you, it's time to make your own decision to get married, you will make, you know, decisions in wisdom. Basically, have those very tough conversations, restrain and control, you know, from making statements that would be, you know, like a seed sown in the child's mind and emotions, restrain from making comments that would make the child start to blame themselves in their moments of quietude, and look at the bigger picture of how to damage control as the situation may be, and continue conversations with the children. All right. And basically work together to ensure absolutely as but best un as unfor they can unfortunately that. you know in, in this situation um, one of the parties here of course is uh, late uh, so we only have the wife you know to yeah. of course help to you know um, help these kids go through this um, you know, situation and of course maybe also the um, you know extended family you know uh, I'll figure out how they can also come in but on a lighter note I want to before of course Libros comes back in um, I want you know yeah. your thoughts on this conversation really in the last couple of days has created a buzz with regards infidelity um, the rumors about Nigeria's high rate of paternity fraud. Um, of course, uh, pe some females are already celebrating also. So, you know, Nigerian men, you know, have been cheating for so long. You know, the women can do better. You know, there's so much. So I want your quick thoughts on um, what the conversation is like with regards infidelity, with regards paternity fraud, you know, in our society as it stands. We've not been able to prove the 30% that, that was rumored, but um, what's the conversation like, you know, in your circle? Well... In my circle, we, um, first of all, we don't go by what the social media Absolutely you know, not. barraging, you know, directs. We tend to like um, keep an open mind as to the possibilities of what the truth might be. Um, paternity fraud in Nigeria, 30%, what is the basis of that? conclusion, where, where has the statistics been collated from? Um, and, you, and you mentioned um, basically um, what people are saying in our circle. Well, in our circle, we're just hoping that the children are at some point in the midst of all that's going on, the children are, you know, taken care of, managed and protect it as best as possible. Okay. And the tough conversations are, are brought to the table. Because right. in the process of shielding children, we tend to, be, we tend to think that we, um, 
they don't know, they don't see, they don't hear. But, but of course, of do. course, they so do. Those conversations have to be brought to the table. All right, so let's wrap up with Libra's show, ma'am. Um, same question, you know, but I think you also want to speak about the kids. Yeah, thank you. Um, we shouldn't shy away from the fact that in the world we live today, sex is a big business. I'm telling you, has always been. The budget for sex annually in Nigeria is triple the budget, the, our national budget. I'm telling you, <laughs> seriously. Break that down for us, please. No, seriously. <laughs> Ser seriously, <gasps> yes, I'm, I'm yes. so we, we, I would not Thank shy away know. from the fact that you know it's a you, 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 you see, even watch musical videos, the man will be all dressed and then the lady is in bikinis. Now we describe, we ascribe mm. beauty to sex, to nudity, nudity. Yes. Oh, you look sexy, mm. Mm -hmm. you know. And so, mm -hmm. go to some of these organizations. The skimpier you dress, the better you look. The more poised you are. Yeah, exactly. For and yes. then go to, in, in these same banks, you're told, get the deposit. We don't care how you do it. Mm. And, and so, here we're talking about rules and regulations and you know, all of these things. You send out young, beautiful women to market more than you do with the men. And... The men want to make money because they believe the more money they have, the more women they have around them. So we, we, are not, we shouldn't shy away from discussing, yeah. you know, that problem. Go to Abuja. Go to National Assembly. Even it is more easier for a, a, a female, young, beautiful female who is ready to play, to get a job. In some cases, you are harassed whether you want it or not. You know, so it is prevalent in our society, especially given the level of poverty. Go to our universities, it's a different ballgame altogether. You see men, you know, with their daughter's age mate. Yeah, they want to protect theirs. You know, in some cases, you even see some of these men, they keep their wives at home and then they want to, you know, also you know, devour mm -hmm. other people's own. And, you know, so it's a big business until we have a national conversation on it and then decide what we need to do. Even go to Pornhub, people are watching. Some people even post their pictures of, you know, looking for partners because it pays, you know. So that's why I say in marriages, communication is very key. Very, very key. Just simple comments as you look good yes. means a lot to a woman. Mm. She says, look, I left home this morning. My husband didn't even bother looking at me. But here I am in the office. My colleague is busy passing comment. Oh, you look sexy. You look this. You look that. Mm. And that's why even abroad, you know, harassment is beyond, you know, physical touch. It's yeah, it also about bad. comments made, mm. you know, to protect mm -hmm. opposite sex in the office. But here we don't do these things. It's normal. It's usual. And yet, then on the issue of, you know, the children legally, here we need to. As much as partners are concerned, when issues broke down like this, talk to professionals. There are children counselors, there are counselors, marriage counselors, there are lawyers. Talk to ensure that if there is any communication at all, let it be between your lawyer and your partner's lawyer. All right. So these are people who are not involved in whatever you yes, have gone through. Thought so they'll deal with the issues professionally mm -hmm. because anger might push you to making certain statements that you will end up regretting, regretting. All right. or we're, that we're you know, can be blown out of proportion. All right. Uh, Abisola Richards, thank you so much for your time. Thanks thank for you sharing uh, your thoughts with us uh, thank this you morning. Thank you so much. I look well. forward to speaking with you again. Uh, Libra Sashoma Singh, thanks uh, for your time this morning. Thank My you pleasure. With thank us. you very much, sir, for coming on the show. All right. We have, uh, of course, another conversation coming up next. A kidnapped aid worker uh, in northern Nigeria, of course, uh, is uh, coming up next in our conversations here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.